feeling uplifted and optimistic. Let's tap into the universal energy that connects us all. Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. Mondays at noon on CITR 101.9 FM, Vancouver. Welcome to Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard. Thanks so much for being with us today. Happy, is it Monday now? (laughs) It is a happy Monday. (laughs) Lately, I just, I never seem to know uh, what day of the week it is. I don't know. It's because I work mostly from home. So anyway, so today, uh, hello, it's a beautiful Monday here in Vancouver. And we are joined by our guest today, Declan Kerr. He is the author of Finding Your Other Half, The Ultimate Game of Hide and Seek. And you may be listening here in Vancouver on 101.9 FM or online at CITR.ca, CosmicDimensions.com, EmpowerRadio.com, or on the Co-Creator Network. Or you might also be watching online on YouTube.com forward slash spiritual show. So wherever you are connecting with us from, thank you so much for being with us. And so we're going to be talking about finding your other half. Now, when you first hear about this, it's like, okay, finding your soulmate, finding a a life partner. But what does finding your other half really mean to you, Declan? Yeah, good morning, Marie. And good morning, uh, all listeners of Synchronicity Radio and all that other multitasking you're doing (laughs) at the same time, which is really great, really cool. Yeah, finding your other half is a bit of a play on the words um, because usually it's it's taken to mean finding somebody else. And that's where the twist is really, that um, a good way to find somebody else and a good way to have fabulous fun and really enjoy the wonder of somebody else is when we also take the time to find ourselves. And um, and I kind of came to that through, um, yeah, through a rocky road really. I, I, I lost... Um, I lost a really important relationship or I went through a relationship that just dissolved and it was incredibly important to me. And so I took the time to um, to sit on my bum for a while to say, okay, what went on there? What was this about? Um, how do I heal from this? But how, it really was so important to me to kind of know, how do I make sure that this doesn't happen again? I don't mm-hmm. want to go through this again. And I know that there's... Um, all kinds of potentials with myself and, and my partner and we weren't we weren't engaging them and we weren't using them and so it's kind of like okay how can I um, how can I really learn from this and so that's been kind of like a guiding principle with this and it just feels that when we kind of open up to all that we are and we allow all that we are ourselves that things change that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yay. Okay. So uh, we're going to open up the phone lines uh, throughout the hour, 604-822-2487. If you want to get on the air and ask a fabulous question about yourself, about relationships, how you can connect more deeply, 604-822-2487. But tell us about the, the relationship that you had that, that ended. Oh, it was, <laughs> what can I say? It was just very important. Um It was one of those relationships where we felt, certainly I did, I think, I speak for my partner, that that we were there for life, that, you know, that was was the reason we'd come together. We were both um, on a a journey, on a spiritual journey as well, so we were kind of awakening awakening to um, different gifts that we might have and different things that we might develop and so on, and yet um, yet we were still in a situation in which our relationship our relationship dissolved so it kind of felt too important too too much we'd invested too much and um, yeah we kind of built a lot around it Um, it was just too important to to just go ah there goes another one or you know Mm -hmm. uh, oh that's a pity it it just felt like it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be right for me just to move on I had to um, I had to dig a bit deep and have a look at myself and and see what was I learning from this? Um, how was it that uh, with the tools, with the gifts, with the love that we had, that we weren't able to make it work effectively? And so, what were what kind of revelations did you come up with? What was it? Yeah. Well, it seems that um, it seems that um, this 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 is the the kind of synopsis of the book, if you will, um, because it's the same stuff. This is how, this is how I learnt it really. Is that if we're if we're looking for somebody else to to kind of um, 
to find us and to um, to bring out all of that wonderful stuff, to bring out all of that goodness, as well as also kind of covering all the gaps and all the um, yeah, all the trauma and and things that really trouble us. Occasionally, we can pull it off. Occasionally, and particularly at the start of relationships, you know that phase that you go through where the other person is wonderful and mm -hmm. it's brilliant and everything is magic and and they're going, God, I didn't know that about you, and you go, Yeah, somebody finally gets me, you know that kind of stuff, and it's like, Yeah, brilliant magic, bring it on, and we'll have more of this. And then when you hit the when you hit the things there, the times where it kind of hits your buttons or hits the sore spots. It's how do you take that magic and that wonder of the love and bring it in there. And, um, and where the book came from is saying it's really, really okay to have a look at that stuff yourself, not to be to bend, uh, overly dependent upon somebody else coming in and healing all of that for you. Because if you have a look at it yourself, you find actually it's really friendly that it's kind of like an old friend and you understood it. And it's just, um, in, in, invariably, it's where we weren't getting needs met, say, in childhood, or where we were told by somebody that we were stupid, or where we're in a situation where we were humiliated or whatever. And when a, a situation or an event or somebody else um, recreates the patterns of that energy, we go back into that hurt again and we go back into that place where we just don't want to be and so we defend it and we defend it. Uh, with all of these different layers, what I'm saying in the book is if we just take the time to have a look at that gently in a safe space and just go and have a look at that and see what we're about and see how this is serving us this is a real watchword in the book. Everything serves us. and See how this serves us and where we're going with it and then just bring it right. And then once that's right, again, you're not dependent upon that other person to press those buttons to find it because it's not there anymore <laughs> in your energetic pot. It just doesn't exist anymore. And you're not dependent upon that other person to make you feel good anymore. And so when they do, when, when that happens, it's just brilliant. <laughs> Yay! So... What, now, this isn't just for people who are single and looking for their other half. This is for you can already be in a relationship. Absolutely. And whether it's a strong relationship or it's a little bit rocky, what's yes. what are you predicting for people who are maybe involved in a, kind of a dysfunctional relationship? Maybe their other partner. So many times, and this has happened to me too, and yes. all of the spiritual blah de blah de blah that I'm always working on here, uh, still in my last relationship, I ended up, I, I see it, I blame you know, I, I had questions about the relationship, so I would talk to my friends, and they'd give me advice that maybe was not in line with my intuition, right. so I followed their advice, <laughs> but then I don't blame myself for not following my own intuition, I blame them for giving me bad advice, <laughs> and I blame the guy for being, you know, yes. letting me fall in love with him, like, it's everyone else's <laughs> fault but my own, so yes. what do you do when you're two imperfect people? <laughs> in a relationship and one of you wants to read the book yes. and get better how's yeah. that going to work oh absolutely that that works really really well because um your life is your life you're, you're not trying to sort out your partner you're just taking uh, you're taking responsibility for yourself and the thing about intuition is uh, fabulous i'm really pleased that you that you kind of mentioned this because this finding your other half i'll just give you a, a quick example so say for instance this is us physically and we can we can see this and we can measure it and we can take photos of it and we can put it on youtube and, <laughs> and we could say this is me physically and of course here i am with you know my rational brain my thinking brain and um and all of this stuff that we relate to each other but here's the rest of me here, and this is just fun. This is fantastic. The stuff that's in here that's also about me, but it's all invisible. And so we kind of we tend to disregard it, and we we forget how to how to access all of this. In the book, you'll you'll see there's um, there's kind of an invitation there to do a little doodle of how do you see yourself physically, which can be an interesting exercise mm -hmm. anyway, because we all struggle with self-image or pretty much everybody I speak to, certainly I do. And then it's kind of like, okay, so how would you imagine, how would, what does your spiritual self look like? 
all of this wonderful stuff. I mean, there is so much, there's heaps in there. There's kind of like our connection to nature. There's our connection to beauty. There's our connection to creativity and all the wonder that comes with that. There's the connection to the soul, connection to spirit, connection to fairies, the elementals, dragons, unicorns. You know, it's kind of like, it's so magical and it's so wonderful. And we, we kind of take, you know, we take notice of that because it's around in a physical reality and we tend to downplay that. And so it's about exploring all of this and saying, I am both of these. And then when I decide that I'm bringing both of this together and that I can access all of this so I can truly know in my intuition what's going on in a relationship. I can freeze frame any situation and have a wander around in it and I, and I can say, what's, go what's going on here? What is this? So you take a situation that's just blown up over breakfast table or something <laughs> and you kind of say, okay, I can't deal with that right now, but f I'm going to take five minutes later on and just sit on the loo or what it, and the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, difference, <laughs> difference of language here. So I'm just going to take five minutes later on and say, okay, what's, what's going on? That's usually quite a difficult question because on the surface... We're blaming so is the loo where you do your best thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and the bath, that's brilliant yeah, okay. as well. <laughs> yeah. Walking in nature is gorgeous, but I don't know how often I do it. I'd, I'd love to do more. Um, so yeah, you just take five minutes and you say, okay, if I'm, if I'm kind of seeing beyond the surface of this, really what's going on? So okay, it's a, it's a fair cop, somebody's pressing my buttons again, or I'm really irritated with, with this or aggravated. So then the next thing is to get in touch with our feelings. And, and for me, I t I've tended to submerge those quite a lot in my life. And so it's about bringing those back and saying, no, these are really valuable tools to me. This is really important. This is life and this is living. So what is this bringing me about for me and how do I feel about it? And then the crunch question is, how does this serve me in the sense of how do I, how can this help me to move on? How can help this help me to progress? Is there something here that I want to let go of from childhood? Is there something here that I want to do more of? And is there something that I just want to say to this other person and say, look, you know, when you talk to me that way, it's not helping me because, and then we, we're kind of in a really balanced place to be able to say, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. Yay, thank you. Okay, well, I think it's just about time. Uh, we'll take a break in, the, in a couple minutes. But when I was talking about the, the blame, playing the blame game, because it's so much easier to put it on someone else Isn't it? than yeah. to take responsibility for your yes. own uh, neuroses. So so, many, so much of the time um, we'll be in a relationship and, and we'll really be seeing the other person's faults and kind of blaming them for, for the yeah. relationship. And also the, the reality is that a lot of times... Uh, one person will be on more of a spiritual path, right. uh, especially if it's it's an old, it's a long relationship. Uh, one person is growing in this one direction, and the other person is either yes. growing separately or stagnating or whatever. Yes. So in that kind of situation, where you're not really on the same page with the whole spirituality track, yes. uh, what suggestions would you have for for a person like that? Oh, in that kind of situation, in that kind of relationship, just take responsibility for yourself and for your own choices and your own decisions. And part of the magic of this bringing, um, of finding ourselves in this way, of finding this spirituality and this physicality, is recognising that here we have a balance. We, te we tend to, because we live in this, uh, in this world of duality where things are either or, you know, so we're either male or we're female or we're uh, black or we're white or things are hot or cold, you know, all of that kind of thing, which is incredibly useful for us because that gives us a sense of time and uh, past and future brings us into the present moment, for instance, all of that kind of thing. But it's only a tool for our experience and we, we seem to have got out of the habit of remembering that we're both of these things. And so when we're on a spiritual path, we tend to be saying, okay, this is my experience, I'll talk about me. Uh, we tend to be saying, I want to open all of this up. And then because this thing isn't happening and we don't see this happening, this spiritual stuff in our partner or in other areas of life, 
we tend to be a bit dismissive or disregard what the other person is actually doing. So as we kind of come into ourselves and we say, okay, I'm actually this spiritual stuff, but I'm also this physical stuff, and one isn't more important than the other, it's, it's really hard for us to get this mm -hmm. because we live in duality. Uh, one isn't more important than, than the other. They're actually equal. They're so important, both of these in our lives. And when we decide that we want these in balance and we want to bring them in together, magical things happen. And so what's going on with, with our partner is, is really up to them. It's because you can see the wonder of them. You can see how the physical uh, and the connection with the physical is coming out with them. And you can see how that can uh, possibly balance things in, in your relationship or act as a, a kind of alkaline to the acid, you know what I mean? It kind of, it's that yin and yang stuff going on. So uh, I, my advice would be uh, no more kind of obsessing about what's going on with our partner. Allow all of this stuff within yourself. Allow it within yourself and then your perspective about the other person and your, spe your perspective on your relationship changes. It's, it's magic. Mm, magic. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to take a break. So this is Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I am your host, Marie Bernard. Thanks so much for being with us today. Having lots of fun here with Declan Kerr. He is the author of Finding Your Other Half, The Ultimate Game of Hide and Seek. And if you have a question about your relationships or your spiritual personal development, you can give us a call, 604-822-2487. That's 604-822-2487. We'll be back with more synchronicity in a moment. 